Like many of the other systems in Escape from Tarkov, health system can be a little convoluted and hard to understand, especially for newer players. On this video, I'm going to go ahead and go through the basics, the things that you probably should know, and then a couple extra things I feel like every new player should know to help them survive a little bit better. So first off, death. How do you actually die in Tarkov? Well, you will die when your head or thorax hits zero from damage. The reason why I say hit zero from damage is because you are able to have a zero thorax or head if you hit zero from bleeding. If this does happen though, your PMC will make these pretty gross pain noises unless you take painkillers and any further damage to that area will result in death. Now you see there your thorax and your head have significantly less health than your overall and this 440 number down here is honestly pretty arbitrary it tells you your overall health like i said head and your thorax that actually matter when it comes to surviving now with that the other body parts will have effect on your pmc if they are zeroed for example your arms if your arms are zeroed, using items, searching, reloading, drawing your weapon, and aiming will all take longer to do. On top of that, further damage to the area will distribute 70% of the damage to the rest of the undamaged body. So what exactly does that mean? So you can see here, the right arm is blacked or zeroed. If that arm were to get hit by a round that does 100 damage, 70 damage will be distributed across all non-zeroed body parts. So right arm gets hit by 100, it'll take 70 damage and distribute to the head, thorax, stomach, left arm, and both legs. Now to continue on, we have our legs. If any leg becomes zeroed, it'll reduce movement speed, decrease jump height, and sprinting will cause further damage. Now this does stack, so your movement speed will be decreased if one leg is zeroed, and it'll be further decreased if both legs are zeroed. So something to keep in mind. On top of that, just like the arms, further damage to the area will distribute 100% of the damage to the rest of the undamaged body. So in this case, if you got hit by a round that did 100 damage, then 100 damage will be distributed to the all other non-zeroed body parts. Last but not least, the stomach. If your stomach is zeroed, you'll have a massive increase in hydration and energy consumption, and your PMC will make constant pain noises, just like if it had like a black thorax or head. On top of that, further damage to the area will distribute 150% of the damage to the rest of the undamaged body. This is when you take into consideration things like armor that protects thorax or thorax stomach. If you're going to a place like factory, maybe worth taking that stomach protection because you have a lot of low damage, high rate of fire guns like SMG. Now you may notice underneath this player model, you have a couple of indications down here. Yeah, body temp, biohazard, radiation, and blood pressure serve no purpose currently. The only thing that matters down there is your hydration and your energy. Hopefully in the future will mean something, but as of now, they mean absolutely nothing. So now that we know about our player model and health, what about these little things up here? Statuses. But sometimes you'll see these throughout your raid. Different ones mean different things. We're going to go over some of the basic ones that I think you really should know about. And then we'll touch lightly on some that, you know, are kind of nice to understand as well. So first off, we have our light and heavy bleeds. Now these bleeds will cause damage over time with heavy bleeds leaving a blood trail. Heavy bleeds also cause more damage. Now this blood trail, though it seems not that big of a deal at first, it can become a big problem. There's been numerous times where I've found PMCs that have gone off and either just died or I've been able to chase them down because they left a blood trail. They so want to make sure you take care of that. It can only cause you problems in your future. Also fractures. Fractures have the same effect as zeroing an area minus the damage overspill. Now it is worth pointing out that you cannot fracture your head, your thorax, or your stomach. Next we have fresh wound. Fresh wounds appear after healing a heavy bleed. Now they can revert back to a heavy bleed if you take additional damage or they can go to a light bleed from sprinting. If you ever noticed you had a heavy bleed and you heal it and then you sprint and next thing you know you have a random light bleed, more likely you had a fresh wound that opened up. And lastly, painkillers, another real big one. If you ever have this symbol from taking a painkiller, it'll allow you to ignore fractures and the pain effect. Sometimes you'll see guys pre-med, like they'll take a painkiller when they know they're about to get into a fight so that they have this buff throughout the entirety of the firefight. Now, if you ever have any of these indicators flashing, it signifies losing the status. So it's not too big of a deal with a lot of these type of painkillers. You're in the middle of a firefight, you notice your painkiller, things start flashing. That means you're about to lose that effect. So you, know, you either pop more or at least be you know, cautious of the fact that you're not on painkillers anymore. 
Now, a couple more that are worth noting. These happen quite often throughout raids. You got dehydration and fatigue. These will both cause you to take damage and fatigue will cause you to take a little more damage and dehydration. So just keep that in mind. You also have the overweight and critically overweight. These will increase your stamina drain, decrease your jump height, make your footsteps noisier, also increase your fall damage, make you slower, so on and so forth. So keep that in mind. Then you have fatigue. This increases your energy drain. And then you have buff and debuff. These are positive and negative side effects from eating food, drinking drinks, using stims, so on and so forth. Hope this helps get a better understanding of Tarkov's health system. Now, hopefully this information will help you survive a couple more raids. But if you enjoyed, really appreciate it. Hit that like, hit that subscribe button, and come out with new videos every Friday. Also, maybe leave a comment. Let me know if you learned anything. If there's any information here that you didn't know. Maybe you're a more experienced player and you still learn something. Also, if you're interested, I do stream over on Twitch every Sunday, Tuesday, and Friday. Go ahead, hit that link, go over there, hit that follow. It's free. Really greatly appreciate it. Love having the guys from YouTube go over to the Twitch, you know, watch some fun raids. But till then, catch you guys next time.